looks like the internet connection is acting up but anyhow I'm back live again so I was speaking about Kamadev trying to shoot his arrow of lust into the body of Krishna but as he was aiming for Krishna and Krishna was dancing passing before him in between the gopis he, he, he couldn't shoot the arrow he, he became so overwhelmed by the beauty and grace of Krishna that he forgot that he had any power in other words, his power of lust and his power for attraction and love became insignificant in front of Krishna. So that is the story of Kamadev. Therefore, Krishna is called Madan Mohan. Cupid in Sanskrit is called Madan. And Mohan means one who is attractive. So Krishna was able to attract Madan. So he's called Madan Mohan. And Srimati Radharani, who is able to attract Krishna, She's called Madana Mohana Mohini because she's able to attract the attractor of Cupid. This is the story. And uh, the entire creative cosmic manifestation is meant to bring us to the mode of goodness, which means to understand we're not the body, to understand we're the spirit of soul. It's meant to bring us to the point where we actually uh, recognize that we are not independent. Recognize that actually there is only one reality and that is Krishna. And service to Krishna is the only activity which reflects this reality. Everything else is illusion. There is no way to make this material world a happy place. This material world is actually meant for us to wake up to stop our tantrum and surrender to Krishna. It's just like a child. Sometimes a child, he throws a tantrum, begins to shout, falls on the ground, kicks his legs and hands, he refuses to listen, and the parents can do nothing. When the child throws a tantrum, all the parents can do is to protect the child that he doesn't get injured, make sure that he doesn't uh, bang against the furniture, or run out in the street or do something crazy so they can limit his, uh, his environment but they cannot stop the tantrum. That happens automatically after a few minutes the child cools down. In the same way us living entities especially the human beings in, this, in these universes we are also throwing a tantrum against Krishna but this tantrum is in slow motion over many many lives and Krishna's business is to limit the damage is to not let us go too far into the realm of illusion and uh, to do that in the previous verse Krishna created the four Varnas Chatur Varna Maya Shristam Guna Karma Vibhagasha and these four Varnas are headed by the Brahmanas who are in the mode of goodness the priests, the philosophers, they're called Brahmanas. Brahma, Janatiti, Brahmana. The Brahmanas' business is to understand spirit. And they are motivated by knowledge and they are in the mode of goodness. And those in the mode of passion who want to lead, who want to accumulate power and prestige, they're called the Kshatriyas or the warrior class. They are the managers. But they manage and rule under the direction of the philosophers. If we don't know what is the purpose of life, there is no use having any division in society. We must understand what is the business first. Once we understand what is the purpose of life, everything else falls into place. Once we understand that we are not the body, then the essential, the essence of that understanding is that I am not a part of this material world. I am a spirit soul. I am eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. My business is to awaken, to awaken this knowledge, eternity and bliss. And it is done by hearing about our original situation. In other words, when we stop the tantrum, we can actually listen to the advice of our Supreme Father Krishna. Just like when a child stops his tantrum, then the parents can reason with him. So Krishna wants to reason with us and he gives us so much knowledge. 
paritranaya sadhunam, which is to protect the devotees, vinashaya cha dusrisam, to destroy the demons, dharma samstapanarthaya, to establish the principles of religion, sambhavami yuga yuga, akam again and again. If Krishna didn't come personally to this material world and leave instructions like Bhagavad Gita and leave examples of his dealing with his devotees, then there would be no chance of understanding God. So Krishna doesn't forget us. Just like the parents, they may not be able to deal with a traumatic child, but they're still protecting, they still feed him, they still take care of him. And if he's and they wish that the trauma would go away. In fact, if a child has a trauma, the parents stop at nothing to have him cured, to have him sane. So in the same way, the whole universe is set up in such a way to minimize our trauma and to understand what is our relationship with Krishna. And the first step is to understand that I am very small and Krishna is very, very big. In fact, Krishna is anor aniyam, Mahato Mayam is the smallest of the smallest and the biggest of the biggest. How is he the smallest of the smallest? Because he's in every atom. He's within the universe and he's also within the atom. Andastarastam Paramanu Chayantarastam. So anda. Anda means universe. Anda means egg. The universe is closed like an egg. So anda. Krishna is within this universe. Andantara Stam. Stam means situated. Anda Ataram within the universe. Paramanu and within the atom. Cha also Antara Stam. I am also within the atom. So Krishna is the biggest of the biggest and the smallest of the smallest. One example how big Krishna is and how difficult it is for us to understand. We have no tools. We don't have the means to understand Krishna's greatness. It is not possible, because it is unlimited. To give an example, in a Brahma Samhita, Lord Brahma, he describes the Mahapurusha, the Mahavishnu, who creates all the universe. He says that within one breath, the universes are created, and within the same breath, when it is inhaled, intaken, the universes are destroyed. That means that one universe, this universe, in which we live, is 311 trillion years of duration. That is the lifestyle, life, lifespan of Lord Brahma. That means that Lord Vishnu's half a breath lasts 311 trillion years. How can you, how can you conceive that? How can you apply that breath to a physical size? For example, my breath, five seconds of breathe out, in five seconds of breathing. A small child, three seconds he breathes out, three seconds he breathes because he has a small body, small lungs. I have a bigger body, so five seconds. Elephant, he breathes out and breathes in 20 seconds, 20 seconds because the body is bigger. But how can you conceive of, a, of, a, of the Purusha, of, the, of, of Mahavishnu, that his breath is 311 trillion years that is not possible to understand and within that breath all the universes exist therefore brahma clearly says yes yaika nishvashita kalam atavalambia yes yaika one kalam within the time jivanti loma vilaja jagarandanatha that the great demigods who control these universes they live within this one breath Vishnu Mahan. This is the greatness of Lord Vishnu. So we are dealing with someone which is inconceivable. And Krishna says it right here. Mam Ebya Paramavyayam. I am above the existence of the universe. I am Param, supreme, beyond the universe. Avyayam, inexhaustible. So this is Krishna. And uh, even if we, and it is impossible to understand Krishna by our own efforts alone. We require the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee. Therefore, I insist again and again, 
that without Srila Prabhupada we cannot understand Krishna. We owe Prabhupada that respect. We owe Prabhupada that understanding that he brought Krishna to us in the West. I am now in Vrindavan in Krishna's birthplace but the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. I first came here in 1976 just to see Prabhupada. I had no other business to come to Vrindavan in 1976. The only business I had was to see Prabhupada. So that is called Pada Raja Abhishekam. Abhishekam means to take a bath, but not take a bath with water, but take the bath from the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee. Why is that important? Because a pure devotee as Krishna. Govinda Kohena Mora Vaishnava Paramah. Govinda says that Vaishnavas are my life. And uh, Bhaktivinoda sings that about a Vaishnava, like Srila Prabhupada. He sings that Tomara Ridoya Sada Govinda Vishram. That your quality is that within your heart Krishna is always residing. Therefore you can give Krishna. Krishna gives the power of attorney to give himself only through his bona fide representative. You cannot directly approach Krishna. You have to go through his pure representative. Any more that you cannot see the king unless you go through his ministry. So in the same way we sing every morning, Yasya Prasadat Bhagavad Prasad. By the mercy of Prabhupada, we get the mercy of Krishna. So, Krishna says, Prakrite Kriya Manani Gunai Karmani Sarvasha. That the gunas that we're talking about, these three energies, goodness, passion, and ignorance, and the mix of these three energies, they do everything. Gunai, Karmani Sarva. So they actually, we desire, but these energies do the work. But because of illusion, ahankara vimudatma, because of our ahankara, ahankara, aham me kara do, or to, to, con to conceive myself as an independent uh, being within this body. Ahankara means that uh, I identify with the body. Vimudatma. We become illusioned by the body, kartaham iti And I'm thinking that I'm doing the work, but actually it's Krishna. Therefore, if you listen to someone, pure devotee like Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he would say, they would say, are you coming on such and such a day? And he says, yes, Krishna willing, I will come. If Krishna agrees, I will come. Even the Muslims, they have this very famous mantra, inshallah, if Allah, if the Supreme Lord desires, I will do. Because man disposes, but God, man proposes, but God disposes. We may want to do something. I may want to move my hand from here to there and pick up a pencil. So the activity that I am desiring to pick up this pencil, that desire is mine. But the energy which gives my hand the force to pick up the pencils and bring it, that is Krishna. So it is not my energy because... If my hand is paralyzed, I may desire to pick up the pencil, but I cannot move because the energy is not cooperating because of paralysis. So in this way, we must understand what is Krishna's uh, power and uh, what is our situation, what is the process of understanding Krishna. And if we do that, we will become happy. Believe me, from Abrahma Bhuvana Loka, from Brahma Loka down to the hellish planets, there is a big problem. And the problem is Puna Avartina Arjuna. You keep coming back again and again and again. What is the use? What is the use of creating anything if it's going to be destroyed and you have to start again? Even the Greek philosophers understood this with the story of Sisyphus. Sisyphus was condemned in hell and his, penalty, and his punishment was that he had to push a huge boulder up a steep mountain. And when it got to the top, the boulder rolled down to the bottom on the other side. Vroom. And he had to go over, back down to the other side, and again push the rock up and vroom, down, up and down, up and down. 
no wonder material world is called samsara. Samsara means circle. That when I'm on top of the circle, when I'm living as a demigod, I am being empowered by taking advantage of so many living entities. And the more I enjoy at the expense of others, the heavier I become. And down I fall until I fall down to the lower species of life where other people will exploit me. And being exploited and suffering, I become free. And this karma, loading and unloading, is called samsara. It's a waste of time. Good. Thank you very much. I'm sorry there was a glitch in the video. I hope that uh, some of the lecture was was uh, recorded. And uh, greetings from Vrindavan. And we'll see each other again on Friday. And we have Vrishni Vamsa, who will support it. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Initially, Mandi Pryor from Cambridge, England. She was also, but I see that she's... Maybe the video stopped. And... Frederick Schoner, all glories, all glories to Guru and Goranga. Very good. Thank you very much indeed, and see you on Friday. Hare Krishna.